Hello, welcome back to the Art Channel. This week we're going to be reviewing a show at the Serpentine Gallery of work by Julio Le Parc, who's an Argentinian artist, born in 1928, who travelled to Paris on a bursary and decided to stay in Paris, where he made uh, the bulk of his work in the 1960s and 70s. So he's an artist who's not very familiar to London audiences. So we thought we would uh, select five or six pieces of work from the show and walk you around. It's, it's a beautiful show actually. You, you enter the Serpentine and right in front of you is a very beautiful piece called Continuous Line, um, which is a, a wall of sparkling mirrors. Um, and that really sets you up for the show. This is a very immersive, interactive, um, light-hearted, um, but still serious exhibition. It comes out of this interest that artists began to develop in the 1960s about the relationship between the artwork and the body so that you have, you're invited to have a much more a kind of participatory physical encounter of the work beyond simply mm. um, the sense of sight. And so these sculptures are very kinetic, that is moving, they reflect light, um, they kind of amplify the space and the architecture and it's very simple in that sense, uh, the, the work that um, Julio Le Parc has made, but it raises sort of deeper questions about how we encounter mm. and experience artworks and objects. I think, as you say, he's interested in not only your intellectual response, but your visceral response, and that is just as important. He wants to um, question the status of the artist and the viewer and to kind of blur those boundaries. And of course he's part of that trend whereby artists um, begin to distance themselves from that idea of uh, the importance of the artist, that notion of the artist being a genius, um, having this unique vision, and moving much more to a kind of inclusive, mm. democratic way of making and showing art. And the second work is called Eleven uh, Surprising Movements. And it's very simple and direct. It's like a, a frieze of self-contained boxes aligned together that have a degree of animation or movement that you activate mm. with uh, buttons on a control panel. And of course that satisfies this quite kind of primal curiosity all of us have from kids uh, to adults. Um, to, um, in a sense, explore um, and to have this kind of tactile uh, encounter and experience mm. of um, these moving elements that are really very sort of elemental. Yeah, aren't they? I mean, I think however savvy we are and however used we are to going to galleries, there is something just ever so slightly transgressive about being able to push buttons mm. and make artworks do things, and that's still fun. It does feel quite quaint, quite old-fashioned, but it's really, it's still a fun thing to do. You are still slightly surprised and there are great noises, you can hear the pieces working, mm. and so they're quite refreshing, the workings out are, are not hidden. And they're quite clunky, aren't mm. they? I mean, there's nothing particularly sophisticated about these mechanisms. Mm. Um, compared to perhaps, for example, like um, uh, graphic uh, computer generated art today, but it delivers that satisfying um, hit, really, mm -hmm. of being able to see these sculptural freezes actually dance and move and shake mm -hmm. and make these sounds. So, uh, talking of hits, uh, we walk through the gallery and um, we encounter a very odd piece of work actually uh, called um, Strike the Officers. Um, and I think it's 19 long punch bags, uh, a couple of metres long, each with a, a, a sketchy painted figure on them and you are invited to go in uh, like an old fashioned gym and to, to punch these figures of authority. I think what's interesting about it, I mean it's, it's great to hit things, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, as you say, it provides you with a really nice kind of um, a buzz. Um, but what's interesting is the, th the figures of authority are not just the ones you would expect, they're not just judges, uh, they're not just you know, police officers, people in authority, there are artists, there are writers, and you are, are kind of able to have a go at them. It's surprising, isn't it? Because you have the standard uh, baddies, mm. the general, the judge, the politician. Uh, but Le Parc includes intellectuals, writers, as mm. you said, and artists, uh, and thinkers, and academics. And it's as if he's uh, accusing the entire establishment beyond traditional um, 
uh, sources of power, for being complicit in this kind of conspiracy. It's very much kind of the mindset of 1968 mm -hmm. in Paris, and Le Parc was actively involved in those protests to the point that he was actually expelled from mm -hmm. France mm -hmm. uh, temporarily. So he's asking these difficult questions, but there's a very profound contrast, isn't there, between these uh, political, between this political work uh, with these cartoons on them and the very kinetic um, pieces that engage light and the senses. Mm. And just next to the punch bags is a dartboard and I thought it was interesting that in the centre, the bullseye, is the character of the indifferent person, that is the apolitical person who scores um, more highly on uh, Le Parc scale than perhaps um, a kind of more conventional villain. Mm. I think um, you said there was a great difference between the kind of kinetic work mm. and the politically motivated work, but I think you know the very simple link is that uh, Le Parc wants us to be engaged, mm. to be alive, to be there, to have an opinion, to have a response, and uh, to, to act on it, and that's, that runs through the whole exhibition. He's really demanding of his own work that it should be engaged, that it should be accessible, mm. that it should have this relationship with the viewer rather than just being this kind of uh, inert um, object, image or sculpture that's simply contemplated in that traditional mm. kind of modernist fashion. One of my favourite pieces um, is called Visualised Vertical Light and it's a series of mesh-like um, uh, pieces of um, metallic transparent uh, structures that are suspended from the ceiling to the floor and through it he projects uh, these moving and rotating lights so it's quite disorientating it's almost like the sensation of being on the dance floor mm. in a club but it's very aestheticized and playful and engaging and it um, never seems to repeat itself. It sort of offers endless possibilities. Mm. Yeah, I enjoyed that because I consider myself, you know, a sophisticated gallery goer. You think you've seen a lot of things. You think this work was made in the 60s, it would be tired. And, you know, some of it looks maybe slightly tatty or you can see the way it's, it's made. But it just still appeals to a really kind of very ancient mm. bit of you that, that likes light, that likes movement, mm. that quite enjoys being gently disorientated. And I saw people stop and really spend a long time with these pieces of work. Um, and, and that's a big ask uh, now with so many kind of, kinds of input to actually get people to immerse themselves in art for, for a number of minutes. And these light pieces, they're kind of entrancing and charming and whimsical. Um, but they really sort of engage you and you are almost like returned to infancy mm. on you, that mm. sort of early stage of learning and exploring mm. the world. It's like, it's a great fairground, isn't it? It's lovely. There are little booths mm. of experiences uh, you can go and explore and be slightly surprised and, uh, and be totally engaged. Um, as we come round to the, to the far side of the gallery, there is a quite a surprising room uh, full of drawings. Uh, and uh, they are called uh, Drawings Made Over the Phone or Not. And Le Parc refers to them really as doodles. And the kinds of drawings that you make when you're listening to somebody on the telephone and you're not sort of mm. fully concentrating. Actually, I think they're much more than that. Some of them are lyrical little line drawings made with ink pens. Some of them are, are working out for, for pieces of sculpture. And you are surrounded, four walls of these tiny drawings, often on graph paper. And it's just really interesting to see how the ideas came about. The ones that went to a dead end and the ones that uh, ended up being pieces of sculpture. And they're made with biro. Uh, they, are, they're, they, they kind of touch on lots of different kinds of art. There's sort of op art drawings, there's little kind of pointillist drawings, there were doodles. I find them quite engaging. I don't know, did you like them? Uh, less so than the sculptures. <laughs> um, but they offer this kind of intimate access to his mind and the way in which he almost entertains himself mm. with these ideas and develops them. Um, they have the feel of cartoons, mm. um, but not perhaps fully formed works. Mm. Um, what is interesting is the contrast, that quite sort of um, clear contrast with the sculptural mm. interactive pieces. And that kind of obsessional doodling, making, thinking, working out is quite engaging. And again, very much of its time in the 60s, this kind of agitational, radical politics, when there was still this kind of idealised belief that perhaps 
uh, the world could be changed yeah. for the better yeah. and particularly by art and creativity. Yeah. I think that is the wonderful thing when you go into the exhibition. It is a snapshot of, uh, of somebody who believed and believes that good art makes a better world. And I, I think that's, you know, it sounds very simplistic and naive, mm. but that's really refreshing. There's, you've seen over the past few decades, uh, a greater degree of cynicism and detachment and irony um, and doubt mm. uh, regarding uh, art and mm. politics and active artistic engagement with the great political issues of the mm. day. So all in all, it's, it's, a, it's a manageable show, it's a fun show to go to, it's a free exhibition uh, and it's on until uh, the 15th of February, 15th. Um, so we think you should go and see it. Thank you for listening to the Art Channel and we'll be back next week with another review. Thank you.